welcome to another episode of The Billy Ho Show. Now before we get started, I'd just like to say happy birthday to my good friend Colin. Colin and I went fishing over oh, years and years and years, but we did a fishing ad for Eater, so I just thought you might like to see it. And chips. Eat a ripple. The big taste always gets through. A very impressive lineup of of trucks. And uh, behind me is the uh, six-cylinder uh, English Detroit uh, TM Bedford. And I used to drive one of those for food sus back in the day. But there's a photograph of me standing beside it when it was absolutely brand new in 1979. And, um, and I found it about 30 years later, well, 209 I found it, give or take, and it's sitting up against a tree and here it is, looking very dead. You might recall me um, talking about having driven one for foodstuffs in 1979, 1980, and it was brand new and uh, delivered groceries to the supermarkets, etc, etc, really enjoyed it. Well, here it is, cage liner written across the front there. If you have a look at this old photograph, which is 36 years ago, 33 years ago, there's me standing next to it with uh, plenty of hair. 30 years and the hair disappears, that's interesting. I haven't got a gut, so uh, I didn't wear too many singlets out. <laughs> but it had cage liner, it was a brand new truck. I'm not quite sure what the number plate said, is it? No, nope, it's gone. It was JM something, but anyway. So I'm reunited with the, with the TM Bedford, albeit um, a little bit uh, worse for wear. I've seen trucks worse than this and been restored and come back uh, looking better than, than brand new. So I can't really get in the cab there, I don't think. So uh, there it is, my old TM Bedford. Isn't that amazing? But it's great to see that a, a few have actually survived and just along a bit there's a, a blue one, but they were the full width truck, but the same sort of shape here. And there she is. So a couple of samples of the of the TM Bedford for everyone to enjoy. This is Simon Vincent's um, promotional truck. Simon, of course, is the editor of Truck Journal. And on the top here, there's a gold dog, which indicates that everything on this truck is uh, a Mac component. But just for a bit of fun, it says here, beware of the dog. There's the dog, and of course there's a big tongue hanging out the bottom and a plate of water at the bottom to, uh, to keep it fed. But there's just about every bit of bling that a Mac could possibly have is on this truck. But I thought that was just a great little touch. Good on you, Simon. Great sense of humour. This is the, uh, the Gregan uh, Foden. We might remember the show we did about this and we spoke all about it. But in a couple of shows ago, there was the, I think it might have been the next shape up, that great big uh, six-wheel drive. Foden that came from uh, Europe, left-hand drive, big military machine, and uh, it's a, also a Foden, and uh, a lot heavier than that. But that's a great part of New Zealand history, that particular shape, and yeah, the old Foden. You might remember a couple of shows ago we were talking to Gerard, and in his yard he's had a Mac like this, which is due for restoration, and this one's made it, but it's just interesting, an interesting Mac. It's probably driver friendly as opposed to some of those cruise liners where you needed to climb up the side of it. But this one I'm sure you could just jump in like the uh, like those old Leylands, like the one next door. And the, they were designed especially so it was just easy for the for the driver to jump in. And this two, both these trucks belong to the, to the same company. And if we just look at the one next door which is uh, the old Leyland and uh, it's probably about a 1960, 61 thereabouts. But um, Leyland went to Italy and they got the man from Italy whose name was Pavarotti or similar to that name. And um, he, so the sole job was to make the truck ergonomically friendly, which basically meant that it's one step you're in, they're trying to get away from climbing up the side of the things and, and that's what they did. And I see the, the truck next door here, this MC Mac, have pretty much achieved the same thing. Very, very easy to get in and out of. And uh, as I said, this one's been restored. A magnificent job of doing it, as with this Leyland. And uh, 
hats off to the pair of them, but it's just interesting that both trucks have been designed for the driver. They're trying to get away from climbing up the, the side of the thing and into the, into the cab, which are a lot of trucks are like that these days. So, yeah, great to see. That was my truck brand new. Was it? <laughs> Did it look like that brand new? Oh, no, not quite. <laughs> She's looking better now. Because, yeah. If you thought Simon Vince's uh, Mac down there had all the bling, I think this one's gone one better. It's got a, a dog there, it's got the three, dog, three gold dogs across the front. It looks absolutely stunning in white. And uh, yeah, it's just a great truck, the old R-Series Mac. And um, I'm sure Jared would love this one. The dog, <laughs> everything's about a dog. And of course, back in the, uh, the time when the dog made itself known was in the First World War, where they called the AC Mac the, uh, the Bulldog, and it's probably stuck ever since. But that's a great example of an R-Series. <laughs> Next door, we've got a, an old Kenworth. The Kenworth came in about 1965, as uh, Les was telling us earlier, but it's very hard to tell what, what year, you know, from where we 65 and, and, and 78, 79, it's hard to tell the year, but this has got the uh, the bonnet and the mudguard all together, but just the restoration job of these trucks is just absolutely stunning. I mean, you can't really stick another thing on this in terms of bling, but it just looks, just looks the part. It just looks like a truck. And on the back of this truck, look at that, it's got Kenworth, Science, great big logo there. On the back here is, is a photograph of a, of a Kenworth. Lovely sign writing. And this is just an outstanding truck. And uh, the people who own these things, it's a truck show, so they've just parked it up and it's, they're probably all off sort of talking trucks with other people, so it's hard to find the people who actually own these things. But again, if, uh, if I was dishing out the points, this would be up there with them. Fantastic. And as I was saying folks, finding the people who actually own or drive these trucks at truck shows is sometimes difficult because they all sort of just lock the trucks up and leave them for people to look at. But I'm lucky. This is Andy. Andy. Welcome to our little show, Andy. Thank you, Bill. And you drive this. This is I a do. working truck. It is a working truck. What year? I said sort of somewhere between 65 and, and 79. Am yep, I wrong? Yeah, it's a 1979 Kenworth W model. Canadian, mo Canadian model. It's... If I was judging any of the structure, this would be up there with the, with the top 10, as thank, far as I'm concerned. Thank you for that, Bill. And uh, this, the, the bling is, 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 what's the word I'm trying to find here? It's subtle. Mm. It's not right in your face, it's, it's no. just everything where it should be. You a little know? extra subtle, a little extra. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. So how long, were you in charge of the, putting the, the bling on? Or, 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 do you have anything no, to my, do with it? my boss, Nick McEwen, did the um, restoration of it. Oh, okay. Probably be looking maybe eight years ago at a guess, but over the last few years I've added little extras and <laughs> little decals and stickering. Yeah, it's just and on the back, it's just outstanding. You know, mm. the, the little drawing you've got in, the, yes. in that back well there is just. No, yeah, that, well I got done. that made up by Trucking Mad last year. Oh, okay. So well, they did a quite a good job. So it. what does this actually do? Um, we tow a gravel trailer with it, or. Um, it has towed milk tankers around oh, okay. and bitumen tankers we cart for road science and so it's a, all it's, over. It's a good, more or less just a, a tractor unit? Yes. Yeah, awesome. With no hydraulics kind of limits us to what we can do but we get it out as much as we can. And it's got power? Yes, still got power <laughs> steering. <laughs> the uh, modern truck driver, when you see trucks going along and me being a truck driver from yesterday, I used mm -hmm. to sort of crank that thing up as high as it would go. For because I thought like more visibility and, mm -hmm. and I felt king of the road sort of sitting way the hell up mm -hmm. there. So the higher I could be, the better. But you see trucks these days, the guys are all way down low. Are you? Yeah, down I, low I notice that too. I, yeah, I go down low too, and yeah, more for a bit of comfort really. Up high, I find it bounce too much. Down low, you don't bounce around as much. So there you go, folks. But you see the trucks driving around these days. It's there's a reason for it. Sitting low, it's you're not getting. <laughs> Not thrown so all much. over your cab. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. What's powering this? Uh, Cummins 400. 
Oh, okay. So it's a, quite a modern one, or the one that come with it? Uh, no, it is a rebuilt engine. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, not sure what originally out of. It's not its original motor. No, no. So. Oh, well, as I said before, Andy, outstanding truck. Thank you, Bill. You must be proud of it driving around, oh, the, I around am. the place. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. good on you. There you go, folks. The old W Kenworth. Here's a, an Isuzu, which is around about the uh, end of the 70s, thereabouts, maybe mid 70s. These arrived in New Zealand and they were a Japanese truck. And um, previous to that, of course, we had the Leylands and the Commas and all those sorts of trucks. In the log end, they had R190s in the, in the 70s. But this was a pretty powerful truck for its time. But the ones I remember, instead of having Isuzu, which is what this is, they had Bedford. And I think the reason they put Bedford across there was to try and sell more. Oh, it's a Bedford. Hooray! I'll have one of those. I know Bedfords, but it was just a you know badge engineering. But it's just good to see one, and I'll try and find one in due course and do an in-depth talk about them. But as I said, it's a truck show, and guys just park them here and wander off to look at all the other trucks that are here. But it's just interesting that this, this is a, a Mark truck, as far as I'm concerned, in New Zealand history. Great. And what we've got here is a leader, and uh, this came from Australia, and the, the basic cab is a FR Mac, and the Australians have sort of made the leader on the basis of, a, of an FR Mac, but this was a, a truck of its time, they were uh, relatively readily available, you might remember the show with Buff Wedding, uh, he had a couple of these for the quarry, and I see looking at the photographs, this has done the same sort of work, worked in the quarry. But I think there were two bonneted versions that came to New Zealand based on a, on a, on a Nissan. And uh, one of the northern classic commercial truck runs, uh, they've actually got the uh, bonneted version of a leader in that run. So they had this version and the bonneted version, which in Australia they had plenty of, but in New Zealand I think only two came. And it was just good to see that one of those bonneted versions of the leader still exists. Um, the people down in Wellington area actually own the thing and they've restored it so it's good to see it on the road as it were so there it is a, another piece of New Zealand history albeit coming over from Australia a copy of the FR Mac but again it's got its place in New Zealand history. Now the committee seems to have had a change of heart here the original concept was how fast you could get at the full 50 metres I think the idea now is how far can you pull it I think the handbrake might have been left on momentarily, but she's underway. So this is the time that you have to beat. <laughs> Looks like the truck show committee is going to give it another whirl. Uh, he's going to wear himself out before they even start. Get into him, Bill. Keep that whip going. Melbourne Lime, every time. Melbourne Lime, available all over the Southland District and beyond. Top grade lime that's been available year after year. Call them on 03 417 8228. The next time you need lime, think Milburn Lime every time. With me is Jared Smith, and Jared Smith is the uh, the boss of Face TV. And welcome to our little show. Thank you, thank you, Bill. And um, so what we're going to do is, is you all watch Face TV and all the great programs that they broadcast. And uh, Jared, first of all. It, it all kicked off in 1997 with Jim Blackman. It was his, yeah. his baby back in the day. I can give you the exact date, August 1998. Was that when it kicked off? Yeah. Okay. I, I looked into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, with Jim Blackman and all the crew. Uh, <clears throat> and they were great days, of course, because there was no YouTube then. No, no. And so there was very little competition. Exactly. But Jim had the idea of make your own TV, so people yep. in the community could uh, you know, have an idea and, and, and pretty much put it together and uh, Face TV would play it. 
not 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 a great opportunity anywhere else. But uh, Jim yeah. Jim presented that. That was great. We are the only station left in New Zealand that if you want to play something on TV, give us a call and we'll play it for you. Yeah. So there you go. If you've got but a TV, we, we do idea. check it first. <laughs> <laughs> Within reason. <laughs> And um, so if you've got an idea of, of, a, of a TV show that just stands by itself, or maybe a series like I do, um, uh, young uh, Jared here is the man to talk to. He was right about that, young Jared. <laughs> well, he's younger than me. <laughs> Everybody's younger than me. But anyway, Jared, so when did you come on board? Well, around about uh, 2014. With your... With your uh, with taking over face television. Oh, OK. Um, September 2014 was our first day of being in managing the Face TV and I became the chairman and we've been going ever since and enjoying it too really uh, it's a great it's a great operation to run absolutely but you had your own shows playing previous oh, to that yes well one of the reasons I was able to take it over that for Eight years, I had a show called The Beat Goes On. That's and, right, I was uh, part of that. <laughs> and we're still playing remnants of The Beat Goes On on face at the moment called the um, Retro Beat Goes On show. Oh, OK. So well, tell us about The Beat Goes On. What's that about? Well, The Beat Goes On was all about the fact that uh, as we were ageing, you and I, Bill, that less and less was about our generation, the baby boomer. And it used to have... Not annoy me, but I used to think, gosh, we've been marginalised, pushed yeah, aside. Yeah. <laughs> so could we please have one hour a week? Just one hour, no more. That's all we need, one hour all about the baby boomers. So we had Tony Amos looked at politics from a baby boomer perspective. Shane Hales, of course, was a great uh, person on the show, and uh, he looked at music from our era. And then we had a special guest. And then uh, the advertisers, of course. Oh, yes, but, right. Yeah. So it worked well. It did. Eight years. Wow. Yeah. 388 one-hour shows. 380? 388. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Yeah. One-hour <laughs> shows over eight years. Yeah. So each, each show, would you come up with a different idea? Well, like, we're going to have this and we're going to have that and we're going to have that. So it's all sort of pre-planned a wee bit? Well, everybody was the same every week, you know, like the politics, the music, the advertisers. But the only thing that changed was a different guest every week. Oh, okay. Right. And it was done in the studio, so we never went out into the field and filmed anything. It was all done in the studio. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, funding. I mean, unlike the mainstream TV people, folks, we don't get government funding. We don't have staff of, you know, thousands. It's just us. Mm. And uh, I make a show. I have to go find sponsors for that. Uh, Jared runs a TV station, so he has to find sponsors and advertisers etc for that in order to keep face tv going so somebody asked me the other day why don't you sort of put it out there that your shows are on oh, we don't we don't have a budget for that so we just have to you know put it on facebook and all the other um ways you can sort of advertise that your show is on including face tv but you're not on um you're not on any platform you've got to be on sky to be able to see face tv yeah. however do you put it over on some of the shows onto um, onto YouTube? Most of, a lot of the shows went up on YouTube, yeah. So even though you didn't see it on yeah. Face TV, you can still yeah. see the shows? Yes, yes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Today, it's amazing. The Beat Goes On finished in 2017, five years ago, really? and yet ping, ping, ping on your phone, people are finding The Beat Goes On and watching it and making comments. It never stops. Yeah. So it's, you know, while you're in bed at night sleeping, it's working for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. well, our shows are sort of like about trucks and old, old machinery, etc., etc. Et and I thoroughly enjoyed that. I know I had a whole mm. career in fishing, but when I decided to go do something else, because everybody and his dog's making a fishing show, um, I decided on old trucks only because I used to, to drive the old commas and Bedfords and It's, and it's and so things. fascinating, isn't it, these stories yeah. that you discover out there in the field? And you talk to the old guys who used to drive them and, and, and yeah. own them and run yeah. the businesses. But, uh, you know, they're all in their 80s and 90s and 
when they go, their, their stories go with them. And so. And uh, when I'm looking at the program, I, there's a guy standing beside an old truck, and once that truck was brand new, and that was uh, their pride and joy, and here it is, sitting in a paddock with grass growing under the yeah. wheels, and you think, oh, once upon a time that truck was, that was you know, it was the yeah. end all, yeah. wasn't it? It was. Well, I just even now, I mean, trucks that are, you know, working in the 1990s are nearly 30 years old. Mm. They've all gone past their use-by date and new yeah. trucks and new trucks and what have you. But I just find that whole, that whole you know, is, is fascinating. And uh, I remember seeing you were going past old Big Mac trucks. Now, to, and still in my mind, a Big Mac was a brand new truck, you yeah. know. <laughs> and here's this old Big Mac truck, and I think, wow, how quick, how quick time goes by. It certainly does. It certainly does. So what's one of the highlights from, you know, running Taste, Face TV? I mean, you, people come, people go, you would have had a staff. Well, look, it's, it's a great opportunity. We had a program called uh, Business at the Speed of Coffee. And, uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. It... Um, it we did 40 episodes, and we had great guests. We had um, Judith Collins was one guest, um, Simon Bridges, a lot of politicians, and um, plus a lot of businessmen that you would never meet, you know, like the chairman of the Bank of New Zealand, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. And um, if you're driving past... Oh, Henny Y. Huntley, you'll see a big news settlement going up there, the Sleepyhead Factory, Craig Turner, he was on the show. I mean, it was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to meet these people that you normally wouldn't get to meet them. And on The Beat Goes On, I had the pleasure of interviewing Jacinda Ardern, and this was before she became the Prime Minister, and I asked her, I said, any chance of you becoming the Prime Minister? And she said, oh, no, of course not. No, no, that won't, that'll never happen. <laughs> and, of course, yeah, yeah. the rest is history. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, there's a, a funding agency out there. We need to uh, sort of raise a, a few dollars, maybe tell us a little bit about that for the various community well, projects. Well, you're dead right, Bill. There's a lot of community programs we would love to feature, but... For some unknown reason, they do not interest sponsors. There's just some things that uh, a sponsor doesn't say if we had a music show. For some unknown reason, you can't find a single sponsor for a music show. Um, it's a bit like musicians there. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they're right down the bottom when it comes to getting paid. Yeah, yes, you know, exactly. Saying, With yeah. $300 a night and whoever's hiring yeah. you, what? <laughs> $300? Like, would That's love to do a book show. Yeah, or a book would show. Would love to do a book show. Can never find a sponsor for that. So it would be wonderful if we could get something going that the community could help to get some of these uh, types of shows that never get a look in, give them an opportunity to, you know, to, uh, to express themselves. Yeah. Flourish. Oh, I like that yeah, word, Bill. Flourish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there you go, folks. Um, I'll, I'll do a bit of homework on that and uh, in coming shows... I'll put up there uh, the contact details, and if you'd like to donate um, a few dollars to some of these projects, I'm, I'm sure um, Face TV would actually welcome it. Love it. It'd be great. Yeah. And, and for instance, big thanks to you, Bill. You've been a great supporter of Face TV. Without your help, you know, we were able to keep going because of the Billy Ho Show, and you've got some news. Are we allowed to talk about oh, the course. new show? Yeah, absolutely. Well, what about uh, doing a little bit of a yeah, promo we'll, for the new show? We're well, coming up on the 1st of March, folks. The Billy Ho Show concludes, and uh, Cranes and All. It's called Cranes, Cranes and All, yeah. and it's um, sponsored by um, <clears throat> All Cranes uh, Limited, and they sell cranes. And uh, they're keen to sort of see the history of cranes in New Zealand. What I remember... There's those great big robot looking things down on the wharf, big square boxes with a yeah. crane sticking out, and then there was one on the water, Raumati or something like that, it was a big water crane. Well, when you're driving along and you see all these cranes on the horizon, oh. you think, wow. You know, at one stage, I remember there was about 110 cranes on the Auckland skyline. <laughs> and I used to think, there's somebody behind every one of those cranes. Yeah, somebody's got to go up there, everybody. <laughs> yeah, eh? Exactly. Yeah, somebody, was... somebody owns them. Somebody's importing them. Somebody's yeah. starting a business with cranes. And somebody's got to drive them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's just amazing. So uh, that's going to be a great uh, show, uh, Bill. Uh, 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 all the way up. Yeah. I just wonder if there's a toilet up there. 
<laughs> they have to be, surely. I mean, surely, oh, I need to go to the dunny and go down sort of 300 flights of steps to the bottom and then come back up again. Well, that's one of the things you could feature on the show. <laughs> well, remember, you know, you, you look at all these little different things throughout New Zealand. Remember the PO? It's spelt P-O. You used to have a PO, didn't you? And uh, you put it under the bed. Oh, remember that? <laughs> I'm sure they've got a poe up there. Yeah, Grandma had one. I don't know about <laughs> We used to have just an ordinary dunny. Well, but Grandma had the ones out the back, you know, you sort of think, you go and then there's spiders and cobwebs and the, the long drop, that's what it was. I don't think uh, Osh. And, but but, but <laughs> Grandma had a two-holer, so you get two of us to go together. You know? Most people had a one hole, you had a two-hole. <laughs> this conversation's <laughs> drifted off, Bill. <laughs> Back to the cranes. <laughs> Back to the cranes. Yeah, so, our, so the story is we're going to look at pole cranes and talk to the blokes who used to drive them, yeah. including you know the, the crane that they used to load the logs with, you know, in the logging skid sites and things like that. Um, the GMCs had an old crane on the back of it that sort of cartled over the place and did all those sorts of jobs, and I've seen a few of those sitting under a tree looking very sad and then they sort of got bigger and the cab trucks got a bit bigger so they've got Leyland Hippos which yeah. is a big powerful truck in this day with a big crane jib sort of they've chopped the cab in half and the crane jib went down one side but look what a fascinating life you've had by going out visiting all these places what's the buzz that you get when you uh, oh just... I just love the history absolutely yeah. love the history of, of New Zealand I mean we, we kicked off back and whenever we came here and then look at Queen Street, you know, all those buildings are all built by whoever was here in, you know, 1840, 18, right about there. They're building it just like they did in England, where they came from. And uh, the roads, you know, the roads and the mines and the gold and all that, all people come to do those particular jobs. And then when you think about today and all the health and safety issues that we have, there was nothing like that back in 1820. Yeah. You just, you know, you, you just did it. You just got on with it. Digging and more digging. <laughs> <laughs> Until it caved in on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was, I was just absolutely, I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated with the New Zealand history about whatever it is. I mean, trucks and what, what I do, but all the rest of it as well. So cranes and looking at the history of cranes in New Zealand, I just, you know. And you've got a fascinating program, which I watched about. They used to have electric cars and trucks working for milk companies, That's that right. was fascinating to watch, wasn't yeah, so, so it? And yet it's coming back in today. <laughs> That's right. But the first, the first car that Studebaker make, and I've got a Studebaker of course, was an electric, it was an electric car. So and we it, think it's all brand new. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, with, with machinery I don't think there's anything brand new, but the thing about those electric trucks is I was talking to Gordon Malcolm and he told me that um, what are we going to do with the batteries? These big, enormous batteries, you know, size of a small forklift. <laughs> yeah. But they go out and do their run 60 miles and then come back and plug them all in. They all charge up for the next day. But after they're used by day, what are we going to do with them? And they said, well, we don't know what to do with the batteries. We can't recycle them. We can't do anything with them. So, oh, I know. Let's bury them. So they dug a very big hole at the bottom of the car and they drove all these trucks in and filled it all up and... He, he said, I can take you there, but we'll probably get into trouble if we dug them up. But that's where they are, yeah. they're buried. And I've got a sneaky feeling that that might happen to what's coming, you know, the electric steam. If they'd have gone down the steam road and, and all the, you know, improve, 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 mm. evolve, 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 I'm sure we'd be running on a cup of water these days. Yeah. You know, just hydrogen. Hydrogen. They yeah. turn the water into hydrogen, bang, off you go, it costs you nothing. Yeah. But um, I did a cartoon once, folks, and I was a bit naughty. But anyway, it was a cartoon of the shell, big, sh big, tall flash building with a shell badge on the top. And you go all the way down to the ground floor, and underneath the ground floor, you go all the way about 12 floors, and you get to the dungeons underneath shell. Anyways, in the dungeons, these five old guys are strung up <laughs> like this, and they've got the beards down here, and they're all university coats on with a bit of a patch around here, you know. <laughs> And anyway, they're bringing in this young guy, and they're all they're all looking at him. This <laughs> be Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah, they're all looking at him. And one of them said, "Did you invent an engine that runs on salt water as well?" <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's, that's that is technology, I suppose. Yeah. But anyway, uh, it's been a it's, it's been a, a great run, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time with with Face TV and of course with uh, QTV, unfortunately mm. they went down the toilet somewhere mm. along the line. 
but it's um, supporting the regional stations of New Zealand, you know, leading to when we're not mainstream by any means, as I said, but we have a lot of fun. We do. We do. And I'd like to once again, I've done it already, but I'm going to do it for the second time. Thank you very much for being a supporter of Face TV. Absolute pleasure. Well, there you go, folks. Jared Smith, the boss of Face TV.